adventure. Tonight's story by Norman Partington is entitled The Magazine at Delhi. By June 1857, one-third of India was aflame with revolt as regiment after regiment of sepoys mutinied against the British and in doing so committed unparalleled massacre. It wasn't a spontaneous uprising and in the early part of May a number of cities still remained uneasily peaceful though neighbouring communities were in the midst of grim fighting. On the 11th of May, 1857, in Delhi, capital city of the great Mughal emperor, Bahadur Shah, this aged monarch was being severely harassed by his two sons. No, 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 you ask too much of me. But now is the time, my lord father. Now, my lord, whilst the British Ferengi is uncertain and ill-prepared, we must attack. Right now. But why? The British do not bother me. They do not interfere in my lands. And they pay me respect. They have not infested Delhi. Infest? They are here in Delhi. Two hundred at least, my lord. A mere two hundred peaceful citizens and fifty soldiers. Fifty soldiers, my sons. The British promised never to station more in my city. Then what better moment than now? There are four regiments of sepoys here, all eager to revolt the instant the great Mughal commands them to do so. But the English soldier has offered me no insult. You say no insult, my father. Do they not demand of the Muslim that his lips touch pig fat? Do they not smear pig fat on the bullets they make? There can be no greater insult to one of the faithful. They explain their mistake and they offered apology. Their colonel, I forget his name, came to make amends. He explained. The British Ferengi is gifted with devious explanation. I am too old. My bones are too weary for revolt. My days of warring are long over, my son. So, the emperor of all India, the great Mughal king of Delhi, Bahudur Shah, descendant of Akbar the Great and of Genghis Khan, will go to his grave with the Ferengi pig fat on his lips. Break me not too much. I am still king, and the blade of my executioner is still sharp, my son. Then use it, my lord emperor, on those who have usurped your sovereignty, the British Ferengi. Listen to the voice of your people, Bahutu Shah. They cry to you to lead them. In but an hour, we can destroy the British in Delhi. No. Age shall have no part in this. Take command yourselves if you must, but not I. My years weigh too heavy on me. This we shall gladly do. But in your name, my lord father, we may demand all in the name of Bahudu Shah. Yes, yes, all. Now let me be. But think well on the magazine when you decide to attack. The magazine, my lord. You plan, and yet you know not what you plan. The magazine, foolish boy. The magazine near the Kashmir Gate. Did it not occur to you? Capture the magazine first, and then you will have weapons and powder enough to defeat any force sent against you. Remember, my son, Attack first the magazine. And the curtain walls between the fortified bastions around Delhi were 12 feet thick, making the city confidently impregnable. But inside the fortifications, near the massive Kashmir Gate, was an open space 
two acres in extent and surrounded by a very modest wall. The brick building inside this area was the British Magazine, a storehouse for gunpowder, flint and shot. It was under the command of a Lieutenant George Willoughby, with two officers, six warrant officers, and 20 sepoys to comprise its tiny garrison. At the time of the mutiny, the only substantial strong point the British possessed near Delhi was the Flagstaff Tower just outside the walls. Here the garrison comprised 30 soldiers. I don't like it, sir. What, Forrest? That superior air of Sergeant Major Butler. Mm. Been touching you on the raw again, Forrest? No. Awfully impertinent at times, sir. You think he was the sole authority in India on artillery to hear him? Well, I bet he's a bit much at times. But again, Forrest, he was serving cannon out here when the two of us were being served porridge by our nannies. In a way, I suppose he's a right to feel superior. Mm, even so. That mate of his, Scully. What the devil's Scully doing up that tree? Fire Major Scully! Relax, Forrest. You'll be chasing your shadow soon. I sent him up there to see if we can get any signal from Flagstaff Tower. But Flagstaff's the corner of mine away, sir. He's got my telescope. Besides, I'd like to know what goes on outside the walls. Uh, me too. The city's as quiet as a grave. Anyway, I put six lookouts on the walls. You don't really think there's going to be trouble, do you, sir? I don't know. It's just a feeling I have. Let's hope your feeling's just your bad digestion, sir. We've 472 barrels of gunpowder stacked in that building. And 700 Enfield rifles. Tempting lot, isn't it? Begging your pardon, sir. Yes, Sir Major Buckley. We're down to six feet of the ditch near the far wall. I reckon that's deep enough, sir. How wide is it? As wide as a grave, sir. And about twice the length. <laughs> nice and handy, if the worst comes. That isn't funny, Buckley. Sorry, sir, but it's well to face the fact. This is a garrison post, Sir Major, not a funeral parlor. And don't let any of those ideas filter into the minds of the sepoys. Right, sir. They're jittery enough as it is. Lieutenant Willoughby, sir, if you please. Scotty's getting a bleeding excited, isn't he? Yes, what is it, Scully? Now catch the telescope, sir, and have a look yes. see from the top of the wall. Large body of men moving towards the Kashmir Gate. Can you make them out, sir? I know those pennants. Fourth Indian Cavalry. They're supposed to be stationed at Meerut. What the heck? Oh! Ah! They've gone mad! Sir Major Buckley, sir, and left the garrison. Double bar the gate and barricade it as well. Send Scully here. Roger. Roger. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Come on, Scully, up to it. Fourth Indian Cavalry, weren't they, Buckley? They were. Came galloping straight across the bridge, and when a poor bleeding guard at the Kashmir Gate calls them to halt, gets a lance straight through his chest, and then on they gallop straight into the city. Let's get this gate rigged up. Come on. I think we'd better prepare for a siege, Lieutenant. A siege? If I didn't know you so well, Forrest, I'd suspect you were making a joke. Look around you. Sir? We have one substantial building... Two acres of fine garden and a wall seven feet high. If the mob had a mind to, they could lean on that wall and it'd collapse. This is no fortress. And there'll be no siege. But surely those four loyal regiments of sepoys in the city are enough to control that cavalry, sir. Would you like me to ride over to their barracks? Only if you wish to commit suicide, Forrest. The very air reeks with mutiny. And as for the four loyal regiments... My guess is that they'll join with the cavalry rather than oppose them. The gate's secure, sir, so long as they don't push too hard. Uh, should I issue weapons to the sepoys on the staff, sir? Yes, I think you'd better, Scully. It'll double our own firepower. When you've done that, come back here with Lieutenant Rayner, Sergeant Major Crow, Sergeant Edwards and Stuart. Now go on, get a move on, Scully. I think that's a wise decision, sir. Issuing rifles to the sepoys at a time like this, I mean. Look, Forrest, I share all your doubts, but if we can't trust our own staff... And who the blazes are we to trust? I've soldiered with these men for years and they've never let me down. All we can do for us is keep an eye on them and at the first sign of any trouble with... We... Just listen to them, Buckley. They're beginning to warm up all right. What's all that Dean Dean they're shouting? You ever heard that before? I can hear them, Scully. And I've heard that cry many times in the past. Too many times. And I've liked it less each time. It means kill, kill. That's what they all cry out when they're embarking on a massacre. However, let's get this flaming six-pounder into position. Put them up side by side so they can be fired in sequence. Yep, yeah, yeah, you got it. Yep, yeah. hold it there. Yeah. Hold it. Ah, that's it. Two powder kicks here, Scully. Now put that round shot behind, but stack the grape shot near the end. Right. 
These guns are going to be serviced faster than they've ever been done in their careers before. You're going to use sepoys, Bucky? No, darn me. I want people I can trust. There's going to be just you and me and a sergeant. Hey, Buckley, that reminds me. Did you hear what Sergeant Edward did? Scully! What Edwards had to say was for our ears only, not to be gossiped about the magazine. And what was that, sir? It's that newfangled telegraph machine that's been installed. According to Edwards, he was there when the message came through. The whole garrison of Seapoy at Murut have mutinied. What? Close to 10,000 of them. During the night when the garrison town was asleep, the Seapoys crept from their camps in the outlying districts, broke into the military prison and released all the convicts. Then went on the rampage. They broke into every house nearby and slaughtered the European occupants, women and children as well. Oh, yes. Then put the torch to the building. Ah. Having done that, they started toward Delhi. Mirat's only 40 miles away. A day and a half's march. That means the 4th Indian Cavalry was just the advance guard of the mutineers. Well, it looks as if Lieutenant Wilby's got some news too. It's happened. The sepoys in Delhi have joined in with the cavalry. Oh. The Emperor Bahadur Shah has done nothing to stop them. And I suspect he's providing them with a leadership and authority they want. I hardly think the Emperor... Oh, he must have been influenced by his two sons. I hate our guts, those two. But old Bahadur Shah has always been a friend. Not any longer, it seems. There must be about 200 European people in Delhi, sir. The killing started already, Scully. I looked over the wall. Even children. They were showing them no mercy. Anyway, let's snap out of it. Buckley, those sir. two six-pounders, line them up near the magazine building and aim at the gate. Double charge each one with a grapefruit. Right, sir. Scully, get Edwards and Crow and put the other two cannon under those trees across the other side of the garden. Lieutenant Forrest, sir, take command of that gun crew and keep the gate as your target. Synchronize fire with me at my signal. And get Lieutenant Rayner to wheel up that big 24-pounder and sight it near the trench we had done. Right, sir. That 24-pounder's not very reliable, sir. Shouldn't be used unless there's an emergency. Then what in coronation do you think this is, Buckley? It's not an emergency. Now, push off, quickly. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, sir. This place is undefendable. You know that, sir. Even with a company of soldiers, we couldn't keep up a mob that's likely to come at us. You're telling me nothing that I don't know, Forrest, but we've got to make the effort. This was my first command, and it looks as if it's going to be my last. But if we make a break now, sir, why, if the mutineers are still disorganized, we could possibly reach Flagstaff Tower. But if we We've stay... no choice, Forrest. We have to stay. We have to stay and defend this place to the best of our ability. Come what may, those rifles and those kegs of powder must not get into the wrong hands. Well, you know the alternative. The last resort. I know only too well. I've already made arrangements in my own mind to lay a trail of powder to that magazine. I shall hold on until the last minute. And if need be, I'll take my command and the magazine up to heaven with me. And half the mutineers as well. But the main one was the introduction of a new muzzle-loading rifle in which the bullet had to be bitten before insertion into the muzzle. This would have been acceptable to the sepoys had not the bullets been greased with a mixture of pig fat and cow fat, the cow being a holy creature to the Hindu and the pig a horrifying one to the Muslim. Though the grease was changed, it was by then too late. Mutiny had begun and massacre followed. Where's Lieutenant Raynor and Sergeant Major Crow? On the wall behind the magazine, sir, with four sepoys. Watch what you're doing with that buckshot, Buckley. Nearly had it on my foot. Who are you bothering with round shot for? It's great shot you need for a charging enemy. Great shots already. It's as well to be prepared, isn't it, sir? Come to the alarm, Buckley. Right, sir. Lieutenant Forrest, sir. Take the far wall with five sepoys. Right, sir. Quick, get moving. Scully! Over to your left! On the morning of the 11th of May, 1857, the attack against the Delhi magazine began. 8,000 armed mutineers against nine British soldiers and 20 loyal sepoys. Sepoys? They're running! The whole running lot of them! Just be thankful for small mercies, chum. They could easily have shot at us before up in it. Oh, they're getting better, Buckley. Soon they'll be... The gate! 
They've got a battering ram. Ready, Forrest? Battering ram? What do they need that for? What are they kicking that gated fool in? Got ready, sir. Okay, ready here, sir. Alternate firing. Aim. As the main gate crashed open in a storm of dust, a thousand suns glittered on the blades of the frenzied mutineers as they jammed together in the narrow opening. Fire! One! Blimey! That grape shot cuts through him like chopped corn! Reload! Ready with gun! Two! They're coming in again! Climbing over heaps of dead bodies! Fire! Two! Number one's ready again, sir. Yeah! Buckley! Right. Buckley! Scully! Uh, fire! One! Uh, put a bandage on him. Uh, Buckley, can you understand me? The rear wall! They're coming over the rear wall! Rainer! Edwards! Stuart! Use your bayonets! Forrest! Fire! One! Light the powder! 
Buckley. One, two. Buckley, put your arm around my neck. And then hop along. Now, ready? I were always taught never to embrace the commission rats. Right, Lieutenant Willoughby. Let's get off him. Sir. I see him. Lighter will lie there, pretending to be dead. Then up he gets and tosses that spear. Well, he's dead now, Scully. Forrest, are they all here in the trench? All that's left of us, sir. Yes. Other three are dead. Hey, Scully, you sure you lit that powder? Can't see any darn flame. Ruddy thing's gone out. I'll put another match to it. Come back, you fool. You'll be killed before you've gone five yards if you try to cross that ground now. Well, I'll blast that magazine with round shot. Yeah. Help me get the 24-pounder sighted on it, Buckley. Get uh, back, Buckley. I'll give Scully a hand. Yeah. <laughs> you, what's the place, Scully? Yeah. Sorry to have you back in a trench, sir, but firing the cannon is my job alone now, sir. Now, duck your eggs and pray! Houses nearby. They've all gone. There's just nothing but smoke. Smoke and debris. Scully. Where's Scully? He's gone as well, sir. And he knew he would, being exposed as he were on top of that trench. Poor bleeding Scully. And he deliberately pushed me out of danger before firing that cannon. Rest in peace, Scully. <laughs> We'd best be moving towards Flagstaff, sir. Blimey. The explosions have even taken part of the main wall away, sir. Right. Quickly. Grab your weapons. With luck, we might be able to reach Flagstaff Tower whilst the mutineers are still dazed. Come on. Blast it. Quarter of a mile. If me crutch is old out, and if Sergeant Stewart don't collapse... How are you managing, Buckley? I'll take a bit with Stewart now. Get the flag star before him. That's the spirit. Down, everybody! It's not Buckley firing at Forrest. What, sir? Get Rainer to hang on to Stuart. You look after Buckley. And cover me, Forrest. Wait, sir. I'm going on ahead over that open stretch. Move on when I signal it's clear. Take care, sir. I wouldn't... He came for that ruined house over there, sir. Keep down, sir. Stay there, Forrest. We've got to get across that open ground. Would have been better if we'd gone round to the left. Lieutenant! They've got Lieutenant Willoughby Buckley. They've got him. They've shot him. Best keep moving, sir. God rest his soul. Raynor! Buckley! Come on, Stuart! It's just a few yards more. Buckley! Give me your arm. Right. Hurry! Flagstaff's opening its gates for us. Yeah. It's just a few yards. Buckley, keep going. You've got to make it. Buckley! of the nine soldiers who defended the Delhi magazine, four survived to reach the safety of Flagstaff Tower. They were Lieutenants Forrest and Raynor, the injured Sergeant Stewart, and the badly wounded Sergeant Major Buckley. 
Subsequently, each of the four heroes received the Victoria Cross, whilst the five courageous men who were killed were immortalized by a bronze plaque that stands to this day in Delhi where the magazine had once been. At that time, VCs were not awarded posthumously. is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Duffenthal.